Right. Thank you, Rafi, for the introduction. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so today I'd like to tell you about Cash, uh, which uh, is a, a competition uh, modeled after uh, the ca CASP, the, the protein folding competition, where we are uh, inviting uh, computational chemists and uh, AI experts around the world to uh, use their methodology uh, to select uh, uh, up to 200 uh, drug-like compounds uh, targeting a predefined uh, protein uh, target. Uh, and then these compounds are procured uh, at CASH. They are tested experimentally in a robust uh, experimental platform uh, with uh, binding assays, and, uh, et cetera, QC. And, and all the data is, uh, is released publicly, uh, including uh, the structure of the compounds, their potency, and, uh, and the description of the methods uh, that were used to select these compounds. So uh, now that I told you everything that matters, uh, let me provide some, uh, some details uh, and starting with some background. So, um, so given, uh, given uh, the audience here are, are probably, uh, you don't need convincing that uh, that uh, given the, the continuous leaps in, in, in computational uh, power, uh, given the um, ever-expanding uh, chemically accessible uh, space uh, and, and advances in physics-based methods and the emergence of, of uh, deep learning for uh, hit, uh, for molecular design, uh, the question is not um, whether, but when uh, will a computational hit finding uh, really uh, transform the early stage of, of, of drug discovery? And so uh, the question that we, uh, that we started to ask a couple of years ago uh, at the Structural Genomics Consortium uh, in Toronto is whether AI can uh, accelerate uh, hit discovery. So to ask this question, we partnered with uh, three uh, biotech companies that are using AI for, uh, for hit finding and hit optimization. And uh, we ask each of these company to use their methods to select uh, one to 200 compounds for targeting WD repeat containing proteins. Um, and, uh, and then the compound were tested experimentally at the Structural Genomics Consortium uh, in the lab of Masood Bidari. And, uh, and I'll show you all the data, of course, but uh, uh, in summary, hits were confirmed for five out of 11 targets. Uh, so why, uh, why did we decide to focus on WDR uh, domains, these WDR containing proteins? Uh, one of the reasons uh, was that uh, this is a very much an underexplored uh, uh, protein family in, uh, in medicinal chemistry and drug discovery. And as a result, there are very, very few known uh, ligands for these proteins, and they are, and, and, and therefore, this target class, uh, there is no, there, there is hardly any um, any data for training sets, uh, uh, in training sets for for this target class. And so, this is this was something that we were interested in, uh, knowing whether AI uh, could be used in the absence of training set focused uh, on a specific protein target uh, uh, and target class. So why are these WDRs uh, underexplored in drug discovery? Well, maybe it's because there are so few of them. Uh, well, actually, it's not the case at all. If you look, uh, if you if you if you um, rank the, the protein families in the human genome uh, based on the number of proteins for each family, for instance, protein kinases, uh, about 500 of them. This is the blue line here. Uh, you'll find that uh, WD repeat containing proteins are one of the most populated uh, protein families in the human genome, with about 400 or so uh, WD repeat containing proteins. So there's lots of them. So maybe we are uh, there is they are not represented in drug discovery because they are not disease associated. It's not the case either. Um, uh, so this WDR domain or WD40 repeat domain. Uh, is um, a protein interaction hub that is involved in the number of, of, of micromolecular complexes uh, that uh, are involved in, in known, uh, known disease associated uh, um, molecular machineries and, and signaling pathways, uh, for instance, uh, for instance, splicing, uh, the ubiquitin proteome system, um, uh, or uh, 
chromatin-mediated signaling uh, or the immune system. So very much no disease-associated uh, uh, pathways. Uh, and actually, if you look at uh, CRISPR knockout studies, uh, uh, screens from, from the Broad Institute and from the Wellcome Center Sanger Institute, so these bars in, in orange uh, and green, you'll see that WD40 repeat uh, containing proteins are actually uh, more uh, the, the most es essential protein family uh, in cancer, uh, more, more so than, uh, the, than kinases, for instance. So uh, you have a protein family here that is uh, large, that is disease associated, and and uh, and probably druggable. Uh, so this is the full extent, really, of what is known uh, on on the structural chemistry of WD repeat containing proteins. Uh, really, there are only known potent ligands for three of them uh, that are shown here. Um, so uh, this WDR uh, is a beta propeller domain that has a canonical uh, donut shape uh, with a central cavity uh, that is in some cases quite charged, which could be challenging in terms of its druggability. But nevertheless, there have been uh, e examples of ligands that bind potently to this to this central cavity. Uh, these two are uh, antagonists that are competing with uh, endogenous substrates. For instance, a chemical series. Uh, uh, it was advanced by Novartis into clinical trial, uh, focusing on 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 this on this uh, on this uh, particular uh, protein, uh, uh, and so the clinical trials in in is in patients with uh, with lymphoma and, and and solid tumors. In this case here, uh, Nurex Pharmaceutical reported this uh, a few compounds that are agonists, so they are stabilizing the interaction between BTRC, which is an E three ligase and uh, interacting uh, phosphodegrone. So in particular, these compounds are, are stabilizing interaction between, uh, between the E3 ligase and the mutated form uh, of uh, a degron from, uh, beta, uh, from uh, beta catini. So, uh, so it, it's very much versatile in, in terms of its structural chemistry. You can find an agonist, you can find antagonists uh, binding potently, at least in some cases. Uh, so this is the background of, on WDR containing protein. So, um, Two of the of the three biotechs that we partner with, uh, uh, we're using exclusively purely computational methods to uh, to design compounds. So these two companies are Atomwise uh, in San Francisco and Cyclica uh, in Toronto. So they start with a crystal structure uh, of the of the of the WDR domain that is targeted, and use their own uh, machine learning uh, method to screen millions of molecules. Uh, and select uh, about 100 to 200 molecules that uh, that were just uh, then uh, or, uh, purchased and tested experimentally uh, at the HDC. And here is the data. Uh, so first, um, uh, here uh, is the results uh, from Cyclica, who, uh, who identified hits for one out of three targets. Uh, the target is called DKF1. It's uh, it's really like is. Um, the compound is not as potent as we were hoping, uh, 70 micromolar, um, but it is very much uh, reproducible, it's soluble, it's well-behaving compound. Uh, the data is reproducible in uh, Alice Lee's hands in the uh, Masoud Bedadi's group at the SGC. Uh, additionally, uh, Sarah Kemani in Levon Halabin's group at SGC uh, was able to crystallize uh, the compound uh, in complex with, uh, with, uh, with DCAF1. Uh, revealing some vector of op optimization and also uh, clearly showing that the compound, uh, though, though deeply inserted in the central cavity, is still sufficiently uh, accessible to solvent that that it could be uh, that similar compounds could be used uh, as as, um, as for instance as a chemical handle to make a protag that would uh, that would uh, recruit this uh, cold for it three ligase to novel substrates, for instance. So uh, starting with this compound, uh, so Julie Owen at Cyclica uh, selected an additional 20 molecules, uh, that, uh, one of which uh, turned out to be a three micromolar uh, ligand for, uh, for um, DCAF1 in, in a SPR assay. So here you can see uh, the only difference between th these two compounds and this nitrogen is moved from here to here. And, and, and this results in this significant increase in potency. Uh, that was quite exciting. 
The other company that used purely computational approach uh, uh, was Atomwise in San Francisco. Uh, they identified hits for three out of six uh, WDR targets, and uh, the data is here. Uh, again, the potency is not as, as, as good as we were hoping for, but again, these compounds are very much, uh, these hits are very much reproducible. They are well behaving, uh, soluble. Uh, and, um, and again, these are all, as for a cyclic guy in the, in the previous slide, all these hits are first in class for their target. So until then, there was no known ligand for any of these proteins. So this is, this is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite exciting. And additionally, uh, especially if we keep in mind the fact that uh, this is a target class that is very much not represented uh, in training sets for AI. The third company that we partnered with was uh, Zebi AI uh, in Boston that uh, since then was uh, acquired by uh, Relay Therapeutics. And here, this is a hybrid method using both computational and exper uh, experimental uh, step. So the first step is, uh, is that uh, some protein samples prepared uh, and purified at SGC was used for a, a DNA encoded library screen. And uh, well, we can come back to this later if there are questions. But uh, suffice it to say that uh, the, so the, the DEL screening is, is very powerful, uh, rather cost-effective method to, to screen millions of molecules rapidly. Uh, but uh, there is one uh, one more costly method, which uh, a step, sorry, which is uh, which is a rate limiting step as well. Which is that um, once you have hits from your DEL screen, uh, you need to resynthesize them off DNA to uh, to confirm uh, that the hit the molecule without its DNA tag still binds to your target. And and this is where. Uh, uh, the method of Zebi uh, AI is, dif uh, is, is, is different because instead of recent deciding the, the, the hits, what they do is they use the output from the Dell screen uh, as a training set uh, for their machine learning, which they then apply to select uh, one to 200 co commercial compounds um, that were then uh, procured and tested uh, at the SGC. And uh, you can see here uh, that they identify hits for three out of seven uh, WDR targets using these methods. Uh, and here the, the hits are a little bit more potent than our previous slides, maybe reflecting the fact that there was an uh, experimental component to this approach. Um, these two, uh, again, were, were first in class for the target, and this one was a no, known to be druggable WDR5, but the, the hit that was identified had entirely novel chemistry. Um, so uh, three, three, uh, three part, uh, partners that all were able to uh, identify uh, hits uh, first in class for their targets uh, you, on the target class, which is uh, not represented in training set. Uh, we thought it was very encouraging, and, and we decided that uh, as a next step, we would be uh, opening uh, our, uh, our experimental hub uh, to uh, all uh, computational chemists and AI experts uh, around the world. And this is CASH, Critical Assessment of Computational Hit Finding Experiments. So, uh, so CASH is modeled after the, the Protein Structure uh, Prediction Challenge, CASP, which I'm sure you all know about. Um, and uh, so it is a benchmarking initiative to reveal the most efficient computational methods uh, for hit finding uh, and to guide future technological improvements. So there have been in the past other uh, hit finding competitions, uh, the latest being uh, D3R, uh, which were very informatic, uh, informative, uh, which, were, which were great. Uh, the, the difference here uh, is that CASH uh, is a prospective uh, hit finding uh, experiment. Um, benchmarking initiative. So we will not be looking uh, so much at the docking poses or uh, at the scoring uh, scoring uh, function, uh, uh, the score, the docking scores of the compound, but we will be looking uh, at uh, the experimental hit rate, uh, at the diversity, chemical diversity of the hits, their potency, their drug likeness. So in this regard, cash uh, reflects rather reflects a real world uh, virtual screening drug discovery project. So there will be every four months a new, uh, a new uh, target uh, that will be uh, announced. 
uh, and the call for uh, applications. Uh, and um, each uh, each uh, each uh, competition uh, will focus on a new uh, protein target, representing one of, of five possible technical challenges that I'll come back to in a moment. Of course, participants will be using their own uh, computational method uh, to predict uh, up to 200 um, uh, compounds that will then be procured uh, and tested experimentally uh, by, uh, by cash uh, in the lab of uh, Masood Bidari at the SGC. So it's, it's a lab that uh, has published uh, dozens of paper on dozens of, of, of chemical, uh, high quality chemical probes uh, co-discovered with pharma companies. It's a very robust uh, and reliable uh, experimental platform. And, uh, and all the data will be publicly released uh, with no restriction on use uh, at the end of each competition. Uh, our hope is that most uh, participants will make their algorithm open source, but uh, because we are inviting uh, biotechs and, and pharma companies, we understand that in some cases, uh, the methodologies or, or the algorithm will remain a proprietary. But still then we will ask uh, participants uh, to provide a, a generic, if you will, a description of the method, but that is sufficiently detailed that an expert in the field would be able to learn from, from their results and inspired by their methods. Um, all the participants uh, are anonymized, um, but at the end of the competition, the top performers uh, are de-anonymized as well as anybody who asks to be. So um, today, when, when, a, when a scientist uh, read a paper on, on computational uh, hit finding, or a, a, a disease foundation reads a, a grant application, reviews a grant application on, on, on molecular design, computational molecular design, or, or, or if a pharma, fund, uh, a pharma company is, hears a sales pitch from a biotech on, on, on computational uh, hit finding, it is, it is really hard uh, to compare and to evaluate these methods uh, because they are all using, uh, they, are, they are all applying on different uh, case studies, focused on different targets, validated with different assays uh, that are uh, not always uh, robust. Uh, and so here, really, the goal of cash is to uh, is to uh, have everybody, uh, all participants working on the same targets and having their predictions tested in the same uh, experimental uh, uh, platform. Uh, so it's a much more homogeneous uh, process, uh, which should be, uh, and so the goal really, the hope is that uh, CASH will uh, reveal the state of the art uh, in computational hit finding as it progresses, uh, as computational uh, molecular design progresses uh, over the years. And in doing so, we hope that CASH will uh, act as an accelerator uh, in the field. So um, operationally, the first step uh, in a, a CASH a challenge is to uh, select a target. And this is done by an independent uh, target selection committee. Uh, typically, the target should be disease associated. And, and we expect to see uh, that most targets uh, related either to uh, focused on, on areas of, of, of market failure, if you will. So uh, essentially rare diseases and, 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 and uh, pandemic prevention. Um, of course, uh, there will be, it will be important to select targets for which uh, cost-effective assays, experimental assays are available, uh, including a direct binding assay uh, and, 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 and an orthogonal assay uh, as well to, to validate uh, primary screen uh, results. We hope that uh, in some cases, uh, funders such as a disease foundation uh, will be interested uh, in championing a target and sponsoring a, a competition. And uh, each target will represent one of five possible technical challenges, which are outlined here on the right hand side. So the first, uh, the first type of, of challenge will be a target which, for which a crystal structure bound to a small molecule is available in the PDB and also known SAR. Uh, the second type of challenge will be uh, a target with uh, bound to a ligand in the PDB but no SAR. The third one will be uh, an EPO structure in the PDB. The fourth one will be no structure uh, in the PDB but known SAR. 
And uh, the last type of challenge, the most, uh, the most uh, challenging, uh, will be uh, no structure, no ligand. So you can imagine that the expected outcome will differ based on, on the available data. Uh, in the first case, we will expect to see rather potent compounds that have different chemistry from what is known. While in the last case, uh, of course, any any type of uh, uh, compound would be uh, would be great to see. Uh, each each challenge each competition uh, lasts about twenty months. Uh, so the first uh, first step is to identify the target, representing one of the five uh, technical challenges. Then uh, virtual libraries are made uh, available to participants, but you can also download the libraries directly, of course, from from the chemical vendors. We also keep the, 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 the competition open to uh, de novo design methods, uh, people using generative models, uh, for instance. And, and so here, uh, participants will have three months uh, to, uh, to have their compounds uh, that they have invented, uh, uh, synthesized, and sent to, to, to us. Uh, so, um, so the first step, uh, so, so the next step is for, is for uh, uh, the participants to, to use uh, their methodology, competition methodology, to select two, uh, 100 compounds. So this, they have two months to do this. Two months to select, uh, to run your computation to select 100 compounds. Then three months to procure the compounds. Another three months to uh, test the compound experimentally. Then the data is sent back to each respective participant. Uh, and um, if uh, a participant has a uh, one of their compounds or several of their compounds experimentally validated, then they have uh, uh, a chance to go on the second round where they can select another set of uh, 50 to 100 compounds. Uh, that again will be, uh, so they have another two months to do that. That will be again procured three months, tested three months, and then all the data is, uh, is publicly released, uh, including uh, the structure of the molecule, their activity, uh, the description of the methods, and uh, and there will be um, heat evaluation, independent heat evaluation committee that that evaluates uh, experimentally validated hits using a traffic light traffic light sorry uh, scoring scheme uh, that will account for of course the potency of their compound as well as their measured solubility, uh, their drug likeness, uh, their novelty. And you can imagine that uh, the, the, <clears throat> the cutoff for these different uh, color light scoring scheme will de will depend uh, on on the the, complex the 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 complexity of the of the challenge. And when uh, there is a lot of data already available for the for the protein, uh, the, these these criteria will be more demanding. While they, while they will be more generous if it's a protein with that with no available available structure and no known ligand. So uh, the first uh, the first target uh, for cash, the first challenge, uh, is uh, to find compounds for the WDR domain of LARC2. So LARC2 is a protein. It's a, it's a protein that is the most commonly mutated uh, in a familial par Parkinson's disease. Uh, there is uh, both a kinase domain and a WDR domain in LARC2. And uh, a number of pharma companies have developed kinase inhibitors for LARC2, uh, some of which are in, in an early stage clinical trial. Uh, now, about a year and a half ago, uh, a paper here published in Nature uh, indicated that most kinase inhibitors stabilize a closed form of LARC2, which is um, associated with the, the formation of, of filaments, LARC2 filaments, which are uh, uh, which are pathogenic and, uh, and interact with, uh, with microtubules. Uh, so what this paper also says is that uh, the WDR domain uh, of, uh, of LARC2 uh, may be important uh, for binding to tubulin, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is pathogenic. And, 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 and therefore, targeting the WDR domain of LARC2 could be an attractive uh, and definitely underexplored uh, alternative to kinase inhibitors. Uh, so we are uh, we are asking uh, here uh, participants to find compound that will uh, occupy uh, this site. 
So the, the call for applications for the first uh, for this target is now closed. It closed on February 1st. Uh, and we received 35 applications from a little bit all over uh, the world. Uh, 11 from the US, five from Canada, many from Europe, a few from Asia, and one from Brazil. Uh, they were, um, some of the participants were well-known players in the field, are well-known players in the field. Uh, there were also uh, participants from uh, some of the top universities, uh, you can see here. Um, and there was a very nice mix uh, of, of, of commercial and in-house software, uh, also both physics-based and AI methods, uh, often combined. And we'll come back to this on the next slide. And, and there, there was a good mix, uh, there is a good mix of approaches, uh, fragment-based approaches, uh, talking, generative model for macro four searches, uh, etc. And, and so it, it would be really uh, interesting to see uh, how these different methods compare. Um, so we received uh, 25 applications from academia, seven from biotechs, two from go governmental organization, and, and one from a pharma, big pharma company. So I cannot disclose at this point much about uh, about uh, this. Uh, what uh, but what I can show is is the extent uh, 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 to which extent the the, the proposed uh, methods uh, were uh, were uh, very uh, very diverse. Uh, of course, many included some form of uh, of docking, of, um, high throughput docking. So either high throughput or ultra high throughput docking, as well as consensus docking, where you use several software or algorithm to dock, and then you, 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 you use this uh, to, 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 to get a consensus score. Um, there were also many, uh, many uh, proposed methods using uh, deep learning and machine learning. Um, so deep learning generative model, uh, deep learning docking, uh, ligand-based machine learning, uh, as well as uh, neural network scoring. And there were some old, true, and trusted uh, refining methods, such as uh, MMGBSA or PBSA, so molecular mechanics, molecular dynamics, uh, FEP, or other form of free energy calculation. Uh, quite a few uh, uh, participants pro are proposing to uh, dark fragments as a, as a first step to interrogate and, and analyze uh, the, the, the binding pocket. Um, there were a few uh, also pharmacophore-based approaches, as well as some similar research, uh, so simply. Um, also, uh, some, some people pro proposed to uh, map water on the embedding site. A couple participants uh, suggested, uh, proposed to, uh, to build models uh, of, of the protein, even though it's in the PDB, uh, using alpha fold or Rosetta fold, and, and, and this is, uh, as you can imagine, to generate the conformational ensembles. Uh, ensemble, yeah, there is an L missing here. And, uh, and a couple uh, couple participants proposed to have uh, medicinal chemists, seasoned medicinal chemists, uh, look at their final selection uh, to uh, decide whether the compounds are, are looking okay or not, which is probably not not a bad idea. So, um, for instance, this participant uh, said, well, I'm just going to use ultra high throughput docking and the output of this will be my selection. While well, these two participants uh, said, I'm just going to use deep learning, deep learning docking and that's it. Um, and this participant said, okay, I'm, I'm going first uh, with a high throughput docking and then I'm going to refine with a deep learning docking. Well, this one said, I'm going to do a deep learning docking and then I'm going to refine with a high throughput docking. And um, yeah, so this, this one said, uh, I'm going to do high throughput docking and then I'm going to refine with a uh, molecular mechanics, so a very, uh, very uh, well, uh, well established pipeline. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail into all 35, but so it's sufficient to say that a number of participants participant proposed two, method, uh, two steps in their methodology. Uh, many three steps. Um, then you had four steps, five, six, and if we go all the way to the to the last uh, participant, starts with uh, uh, docking fragments uh, to uh, to generate uh, uh, interaction hotspots uh, in their in their pocket, and then they use these interaction uh, interaction interaction hotspots to identify uh, SPBC, similar pockets in the PDB with bound compound. 
And now that they have identified uh, pocket in the bond, bond in the PDB with similar uh, uh, similar interaction hotspots bound to small molecule, they use this uh, to generate a pharmacophore hypothesis and do a pharmacophore search of the uh, chemically available uh, libraries. And then uh, it, the, the result of this pharmacophore search is actually used to train a deep learning a generative model. And the output of this is then uh, used to uh, uh, refine with a high throughput docking step. Uh, so uh, whether this is uh, genius or madness, I don't know, but 20, 20 months from now, when uh, the experimental data uh, is out, we'll have a better idea. And I think it's going to be really interesting to compare uh, how these different methods uh, uh, deliver. So uh, the second uh, challenge uh, for cash uh, will be uh, the uh, NSP13 helicase uh, from SARS-CoV-2, and, and more uh, more precisely the RNA binding site of this helicase. Uh, so, <clears throat> as you probably are aware, most drug discovery projects on SARS-CoV-2 are focused either uh, on, on one of the two proteases, and mostly the, the M-PRO, the main protease, uh, or uh, the uh, RDRP, the, the RNA polymerase. And, and uh, the NSP13, the helicase, is very much underexplored, uh, underexplored so far. And yet, helicase inhibition is not a novel uh, antiviral strategy. And then, so there are known potent inhibitors uh, for uh, helicase from a herpes simplex virus, uh, virus or hepatitis C, for instance. Uh, additionally, uh, if you uh, look at all the binding pockets uh, uh, in all the structures of all SARS CoV 2 proteins, uh, and, and you look uh, at that uh, level of conservation uh, from all hosts, so, so, so uh, uh, across coronaviruses. So if you look at coronaviruses isolated from, from bats, from camels, from pigs, from humans, uh, you'll find that the, the RNA binding site uh, of the helicase, of the coronavirus helicase, is the most conserved Binding pocket across all these uh, all these coronaviruses. So you can, it is reasonable to expect that a drug that would bind the 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 the, the RNA binding site of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, NSP13 helicase would also bind to uh, the RNA binding site of of the um, coronavirus that may uh, jump from some zoonotic, zoonotic host to human in 20 years from now. Um, and so this is uh, this is uh, potentially an interesting uh, target for pandemic prevention, that is coronavirus prevention. Um, additionally, uh, there are some uh, fragments uh, in the PDB bound to this uh, RNA binding site. This is a work uh, conducted by uh, Joseph Newman in uh, Offer Gileadai's uh, uh, lab uh, at uh, Oxford, and. Um, and so really uh, targeting uh, NSP30, uh, NS NSP13 could be a complementary uh, approach to existing therapies, uh, such as uh, Paxlovid, uh, which is targeting the MPRO or Molnupiravir, which is targeting uh, RDRP, and could be, as I mentioned, uh, an, effect an effective uh, um, uh, strategy uh, against future uh, coronavirus outbreaks. So uh, this uh, this competition is not yet open. Uh, it will open uh, probably uh, sometime in the spring uh, or maybe before that. And if you want to uh, be uh, to remain informed on ca on cash, of course, I invite you, you to go to the to to, to visit the website. Um, uh, last word is that cash is um, is part of a larger. Uh, initiative called uh, Target 2035. So this is a, a long-term vision uh, where the goal is to have a chemical probe, a chemical tool for each uh, human druggable protein by the year 2035. And to reach that, go that this goal, the, the, uh, the SGC is catalyzing the, the formation, the federation uh, of uh, uh, international group of, of biomedical scientists from the public and the private sectors. And um, even uh, even this large group will not be able to achieve this goal uh, 
given with today's technology. So the first step really in target 2035 is to develop and identify uh, the best technology that will most efficiently, uh, can, can most efficiently be used to, uh, to uh, identify hits and optimize them. And as you can imagine, uh, we believe that cash could play, uh, to, would have a significant impact uh, uh, in this regard. Uh, so finally, I'd like to acknowledge the hard work of my colleagues uh, and, and collaborators uh, who worked on the, on the pilot study focused on WD repeat containing protein that I uh, referred to, that I presented uh, earlier in the talk. And uh, here I'm uh, underlining people who did the experiment, uh, actual experiment uh, at the bench uh, or at their computer. Uh, additionally, uh, these three pharmaceutical companies, Bayer, BI, AstraZeneca, uh, played, an, played an important role in in uh, in, in outlining 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 sorry the, the framework uh, of cash uh, and finally um, last slide uh, so if you want to know more about cash uh, please uh, look at the the paper that was published uh, an hour and thirty minutes uh, ago on Nature Reviews Chemistry and here is the link I just got it. Um, you can see that uh, many many pharma are represented uh, in the in the author list: um, Sanofi, Bayer, AstraZeneca, Novartis, uh, Boringer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this really reflects the fact that uh, that uh, pharmaceutical companies are very much interested in 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 in, uh, in knowing uh, uh, the best technologies and uh, and the top layers in the field of computational drug design. And actually, the, 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 the original idea for cash comes from uh, Alexander Hillish, who is, um, who is heading uh, computational uh, drug design and discovery uh, at, uh, at Bayer. Um, and this idea was the main driving force in, in, in turning this idea into a real thing. Uh, it was uh, really uh, Al Edwards uh, at the Structural Service Consortium. Um, and with this, uh, yeah, with this, I'm going to, to stop and, uh, and take any questions. Thank, thank you very much, Matteo. It's a very exciting initiative. Um, I have a number of questions, but before I ask my questions, I will ask those questions that appear in the Q&A. So the first question is, how sensitive is the Dell screening? Also, does that need to be trained or can it be done blind to the target data set? Yeah, so Dell screening is a, is a method where you have uh, each, you have millions of molecules in the test tube and each molecule uh, is, is, um, is uh, tagged with a DNA which, which uh, reflects the, the synthetic steps which, uh, that lead to this specific molecule. So each molecule is attached with a unique piece of DNA. And then you 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 you, you basically uh, uh, incubate this uh, this solution uh, with uh, immobilized protein, and so you have your molecule that binds to your protein. You wash, and then you use PCR to amplify the DNA that remains attached to your protein, and and to identify to know which proteins which molecules were attached to your uh, bound to your protein. The problem is that it could the, the binding event is either driven by the chemical molecule or by the DNA tag. So then you want to resynthesize the, the molecule without the DNA tag and test whether it's binding. So, um, so this is the general idea, and and uh, and it is it is very powerful method that uh, that yeah, the red limiting the red limiting step is, is really resynthesizing resynthesizing the compounds, uh, and because the, it is known to have a lot of false positives, but also also true positives in most cases. <clears throat> Thank you, Matthew. A second question is, when determining the red, yellow, green grading for an entire novel protein, how do you determine the threshold? That is, what criteria influence how you establish the values? Yeah, that's a good question, and I don't have a good answer. Um, that, that's uh, th th There is an independent uh, heat evaluation committee uh, that will uh, meet on a regular basis to discuss for each uh, each specific target what they believe uh, is the are the, the the best criteria, 
and this criteria will be uh, will be uh, given to participants before uh, they start the competition, so that they know beforehand. I know that my that my compound will need to be uh, within this this uh, threshold in terms of their log p, their molecular weight, or, or their um, solubility. I guess uh, so. Um, it will vary, uh, and 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 uh, and will be uh, will be uh, discussed and debated within uh, an independent uh, committee of experts. So. Um... Right now, there aren't any more questions from the audience. I will um, then bombard you with a number of questions I have, okay? Uh, I think the first one that I would like to ask is why the 20 month cycle period for publication? Because that involves a second round informed by the res the experimental results and 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 there are a number of things that come to my mind at this moment one is that it no long it models up the the categories that you had defined in the beginning because at some point for example a category that had no sar now do have some information from ligands and so it will model things. It is essential for sure to get to, to the objectives of the target 2035 of, of, of functional uh, prob probes for human proteins, but, but to actually judge methods, I would argue that not only it's better that it's fast, but it's clearer in terms of the categories to release the data to to, do, to release the evaluation of the methods after the first experimental determination of, of, uh, of, of, of uh, accuracy. Yeah. So what's your take on that point? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so first, uh, the first point is, in case it was not entirely clear for, for everybody, uh, is that the after the first round, the experimental data that is sent back to the, to the participants is only on the compounds that they selected. So a participant B will not have, will not get the experimental data from participant A. So it, there's no modeling uh, here. Um, second, why, why do we include uh, a hit, uh, a second round uh, of, of optimi optimization, if you will? It's, it's because um, we, Probably we will get some compounds. I mean, when, when you when you do this, you, you often find uh, when when you do hit hit identification, you often find some compounds that sometimes are not turn out to be not good starting points for 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 optimization. So these are compounds that are weak or that are that are binding in a way that is not not favorable. Uh, and, and we see this often, uh, compounds that uh, seem to be binding and weakly, uh, uh, weakly, but uh, that in some cases a weak compound can be a very good starting point. In other cases, it's going to be a very bad starting point. And you don't know this unless you, you do a small expansion uh, step uh, after that to interrogate the SAR around your original, original hit. And this small step of interrogating the SAR will, will re reveal a lot as to the potential of the of the scaffold that you have identified in the first step, and and, and so this is that, this is why we do it. Yeah, that that is I completely agree with you. But a target class that is on the most difficult level, let's say, well, either level, but without any SAR information, no longer will be so, even if it's only the information from their own screening that is coming back then on the second round they they have knowledge of which molecules uh, of a data set of binder versus non-binders even if it's only 200 molecules they will have information that i don't know 10 are binders and 190 are not binders even if it's their own data set and not public or anything but then on the second then on the second round there the category of the target no longer is one without sar even if it's a limit limited data set i think in many cases the the 
results will be either nothing is experimentally validated or maybe one compound of what, out of 100 is experimentally validated, at least for, for targets that are not, uh, that have uh, no, no, no ligands. Mm -hmm. And so in these cases, uh, I think it would be important to have, uh, to have a second step. Yeah. No, uh, I think it's essential to have a second step. It's just from, a, from someone, from my point of view, as someone who's a computational method developer, um, I'm more interested in, in seeing the methods, how they did, and, and, and then, you know, the rest is more towards the practical use of, yeah. of those. Yeah. Um, so keep in but, mind, yeah, but, yeah, keep in mind that I agree with you that the first, uh, right now we are at a, at a step where we won't get any results until 20 months, which can be frustrating. Yeah. But this is, uh, yeah. this is a long, long term project, and, and will, there will be one new competition starting every four months. So yeah. 20, 20 months from now, we'll, we'll get new data every four months, which, yeah. which, is, which should yeah. be revealing and, and hopefully yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll... Yeah, yeah. if it can be sustained as a project, it will be super exciting. Yeah. Um, I have a, a, another question and um, um, for, for the challenge number two, the NSP 13 from SARS-CoV-2, how you, you mentioned that you want specifically the RNA binding domain to be the target. And how is it that experimentally that you will verify that? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a competition uh, assay, uh, fluorescence polarization assay using a tagged, uh, I forget whether it's DNA or RNA. Uh, it's a tag uh, okay. RNA, I believe. Uh, so you you just you just measure the, the competition. That's going to be the, the primary screen, and then this okay. and, uh, and yeah, this, that's. Uh, so, so that's what I thought. Now, when you do a competition assay, you're setting the bar higher than a direct binding assay because if it's not, it, if it if it's a weak binder that cannot compete but yeah. still could bind, you yeah. know, you're you're not seeing those. What's your take on that? Actually, yeah, I, you know what? No, I, I, no, no, no. Sorry, I I take it back. The first screening assay for this target is a GSF. It's a, it's a binding. It's a, it's a it's a thermal stabilization assay. But then you don't know that it's on the no. And RNA then there is yes. And then is the yeah uh, yeah. Uh, then there's, there's there's a secondary assay. Okay. You're right. Okay. You're right. Okay. And um, I was curious about the data on DCAF one. Mm -hmm. Uh, because at least two of the companies, Zebi, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name of the company correctly, and Cyclica, at least two of the three companies found molecules for the same DCAF1 target, mm -hmm. according to the data that you showed. Yeah. Um, so, how similar are these molecules? Do they bind at the same place, uh, the same pose, same conserved interactions? They're found totally different chemistry. Can you speak a little more about this? Yeah, they're entirely different. They both bind to the same pocket, but at the very dis different. So, you have, so it's kind of a channel, right? So you have this donut, uh, and if you turn it like this, it's a channel. And yeah. one of them uh, is binding at uh, close to the surface, and the other one is, is much deeper. Mm -hmm. So this data is public, or it's um, um, so the data from uh, from a cyclic guys is, is of course uh, well, I'll just show it to you, and it's in the the, the the structure is in the PDB, so you can download it from there. Uh, the second one, I don't know whether it's in the PDB yet or not, but it will be. Uh, it will be. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's all uh, yeah, it's all open, open, open. Okay, okay. Interesting. Now, last question. I'm sorry I'm asking so much. It's very yeah. exciting. But the WDR domains are also very exciting. And, and I was wondering, I don't know much of the, bio, the, the structural biology of it, but are these repeat sub, un, not subunits, I guess I'll call it subunits, but the, the beta, the beta uh, sheet that composes, that is at seven repeat on this barrel, 
Is it a repeat unit across? Is it the same? So you have symmetry there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a yeah, it's 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 a it's a better it's a better two better well no several uh, better sheets. Uh, I mean one better sheet uh, that, that yeah, is never... that is repeating. So it's a better propeller. In All most right. cases, it's it's uh, it's uh, so it's between six generally between six and eight of these of these uh, uh, pro and they are propellers. They are identical subunits or very similar, I imagine. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. And did that that this that do these ligands bind in more than one place, L like more than one, not one to one with the protein because of the symmetry or? No, no. So, so the sequence is so there is it's just W D. So there is just this this small small. Uh, uh, so it's it's a W and a D that separated by four amino acids. So there is there is variation uh, definitely, and and the binding site is actually the central cavity is very much diverse from one protein to another. So even the, the, the topologically they are similar, structurally they look the same. Uh, but if you look at the uh, amino acid or, or atomic level, there is a great diversity in the binding site. And, and even, even two WGRs that are binding to the same substrate, for instance, if you have two, two uh, RBPP4 and, and WGR5, bo both of them have uh, an arginine that will bind the central cavity. But if you compare the two binding pockets, they are very much different. And ligands that bind to one do not bind to the other. So even though that the structure they look the same, it's it, it's it's uh, it, it's a good target class to find very selective ligands for one to the other, one or the other. One one last uh, thing that I would like to mention, that it occurred to me is that um, over a twenty month period or over a ten month period, a lot can change about the information. Um, known for a particular target that will again model up the definition of the of the categories yes uh, but everybody will, same, everybody will be in the same boat right so all the participants yeah. will have access to the same yeah. so in the end it's still comparing how the different methods are doing yeah. given, uh, given what is I'm known just, at a specific time on that on the project yeah i'm just i'm just trying to draw parallels to how different types of methodologies could be separated and 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 compared apples to apples in casp um here it will be more difficult i think to that's true to, to it's judge it's things from a methodological point of view and and just that all the different combinations that you mention of 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 sub partial steps within the pipeline show how complex things can be made to be and um i wish luck to the people judging and and categorizing all the methods and and you know comparing apples to apples when declaring a winner or <laughs> It's, it's going to be a challenge in end, yeah in the end in the end all the data will be available so so that any uh, any anybody can make their own judgment on what they think work which method worked the best uh right well thank you very much matthew yeah uh, oh wait i have i have one more question from the audience is there a lot of redundancy in function of wdr proteins um redundancy not uh, but in the term of uh, in terms of their uh, the, the the type of of, of uh, the biology uh, to some extent so many uh, the, over 60 of them i believe uh, are are substrate uh, recognition domains for uh, e3 ligase complexes for instance uh, but they all recognize different uh, degrounds from different proteins um, you have a number that are involved uh, in uh, that are component of large, large um, uh, multi-protein uh, complexes involved in epigenetic mechanisms, for instance, uh, etc. 